So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about a project that uh, my co-author, uh, Huggy Rao, and I spent about seven years on. I'm in the engineering school. Huggy's in the business school. His name is Hayagriva, but everybody calls him Huggy. And, and the, the challenge that we looked at, essentially, you've got a situation, you've got an organization or a network, and you've got a little bit of goodness. How do you spread it to more people in more places without screwing up what you're trying to spread or the organization or social system that it's part of? And we call this a scaling challenge. And, and we go into a fair amount of detail in terms of things like principles, decisions that people face, and so on. But for now, I'm just going to focus on one of our little insights. And it's something that I, I've been obsessed with for quite a while, the notion that bad is stronger than good. This is a theme, and I'm going to swear twice in this lecture, I'm sorry, um, in a book I wrote called The No Asshole Rule, and also my last book called uh, Good Boss, Bad Boss. But, it, but in this case, uh, it, it applies to scaling. So let me tell you a little bit about a little bit of the social psychology of bad is stronger than good, which is that we have quite good evidence that if you think of bad things in life, uh, lying versus telling the truth, being lazy versus working hard, being in a good mood versus being in a bad mood, stealing versus being honest, and so on, it actually turns out that bad behaviors um, get ingrained more deeply, uh, they're harder to get rid of, and they're more contagious. All sorts of evidence that bad is stronger than good. And my favorite example uh, comes from actually research on personal relationships. There's very good evidence that, um, and this comes from long-term married couples, that um, if you go below five to one, so for every time you have a bad interaction with your partner, on average you don't make it up with five good ones, things are not going to last. And um, as a guy who's been married 30 years, uh, whenever I'm bad, I tell myself I've got to be good five times, and so far it is working. Um, <laughs> when, when you move into the workplace, there's also a five to one rule where if you have a bad interaction with your boss, it packs five times the impact of mood on your mood as a good interaction. Also moving into the workplace, there's other evidence that if you've got one deadbeat or jerk on your team, brings down performance 30 or 40%. Two reasons, one is, and we've all had that person on our team, you end up spending more time dealing with that difficult person than doing the work itself and also their behavior gets contagious. So sort of the upshot of this talk, and I'll go to some of the details, but there's lots of things in life, including scaling, where, if you will, eliminating the negative is more important than accentuating the positive. And we had a great talk on writing earlier, and as somebody, had, I basically spent half of my 30-some years at Stanford locked in a room typing, and I always love this quote from Hemingway, every writer needs a built-in chalk-proof uh, shit detector, and we would argue that when it comes to spreading scaling, a similar mindset um, is required, and there's that, that wonderful book, uh, Good to Great, we, we say it's bad to great in part, that your job when you're trying to spread excellence is to really focus on getting rid of the bad things so that the good things can rise up. And the example I'm especially going to focus on, so this is a woman named Bonnie Simi. Some of you may have known her as Bonnie Warner. Amazing person, three-time Olympian in the luge. She's actually got three Stanford degrees. I don't know what her undergraduate degree is, but she has an MBA and a degree from my department, Management Science and Engineering. Uh, she's also an active pilot, first United, then JetBlue, and she's an executive. She still flies, and she's an executive. Um, and, but Bonnie is a really interesting person because she's had many jobs at JetBlue, but I say they're all the same job, which is what's most screwed up she works on fixing. And some of us will remember that in 2007, there was a couple thousand people stuck on planes in Kennedy. This was, they called it the Valentine's Day Massacre because the whole JetBlue system sort of came down. This was caused by sort of an inability to deal with scale or size. The airplane grew so big they did not have the systems to deal with it. They tried to fix it with top-down solutions two or three times. Um, after those failed, Bonnie, with, by the way, very little budget and just a little support from the, stop, the top, started bringing together groups like this one. And what they did was something she actually learned at the D school, which were process maps. And, and really mapping out the process, a storm hits Kennedy, how do you, what do you, steps do you take to close and reopen it? And she brought together people from all over the airlines. She, she brought together uh, gate agents, pilots, people in operations, uh, reservations, all sorts of different folks. And what they did was they, they did this process map. And the, see those pink stickies, those pink post-it notes? Those are things that needed to be fixed in order to make the system work. 
And they did this process over and over again, ultimately with about 15 or 20 groups. And that's the process that JetBlue went through to, to, improve, the, to improve this situation where they call it irregular operations, where a storm hits Kennedy in, or other air, airports and we close and reopen it. And, and, and to me, it, it's quite compelling because you can see this focus on getting rid of the negative. To give you two other quick examples, another uh, well-known Stanford grad, probably grad, a much richer one, CEO Carlos Brito, CEO of the largest beer company in the world, InBev. Uh, they started out being a, kind of a small Brazilian company and, and eventually gobbled everything. They gobbled a whole bunch of companies in Europe and then finally Anheuser-Busch recently. And last, about seven or eight years ago, and I had the pleasure of seeing him speak in New York about two weeks ago, and he described the process by which they roll up these companies and the process by which he manages. And he said, what we do is gap analysis. We just always focus on where we want to be in the things that are stopping us from getting there and removing them. And if people don't think that way, I don't want them working for me. So again, this notion to get excellence, you focus on getting rid of the bad things and then one thing that I really emphasize when it comes to um, bad behavior, especially clearing the way for excellence to spread, it isn't just this broad thing where you have these big goals and you try to reach them. Um, all the evidence we have when it comes to spreading excellence, our, our first chapter, kind of our message is that it's a ground war, not just an air war. You gotta kind of grind it out every day and get rid of the bad behaviors in particular in this case. And so this is an example. This is a guy named Chris Fry. Um, he was uh, head of engineering at Twitter for about a year. He's also one of the heroes in our book for beating, building the development organization at Salesforce. So he gets, to sale, or he gets to Twitter and he gathers together the top eight people in engineering and it's, he's having a meeting with them and they're all looking at their phones. They're just looking, and my fav favorite part is he said, we had a vote and they didn't even stop looking up, they just voted. <laughs> so, uh, so he decided this was bad behavior. Um, and so what he did is, is he now collects the cell phones. And so I, I, I wrote him a note and I said, can I use this example, Chris? And the, and the great thing is that a tweet went out. So, and, and what that says is CH Fry rule, cell phones must be deposited with RJ San Jose, that's his assistant, and, and so this was on Twitter. So to me, this is an example of sort of nipping bad behavior in the bud. So just to wrap up, um, there's lots of different aspects that we discuss um, when it comes to scaling up excellence, but I guess if we were gonna pick the most important, we would pick this notion of bad to great that um, the first order of business is to get rid of the bad stuff, to clear the way for the good. And um, this applies to writing, and it, and it might also apply to our personal lives. So thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>